So, I recently discovered that one of my most popular videos ever had been stolen. May 24th, 2022, early in the morning. In the early morning of May 24th, 2022. L, one of the artists for the upcoming Fazbear Fanverse initiative title Pop Goes Evergreen. L, one of the creatives in the forthcoming Fazbear Fanverse initiative title Pop Goes Evergreen. Was getting ready to start their day. Was about to begin their day. When they saw a message from Kane Carter, the director of the project. When they noticed a notification from Kane Carter, the project's director. Evergreen has had leaks. Evergreen has had leaks. The rest of the day would be filled with chats and video calls as the team frantically scrambled to put together what had happened. The rest of the day would be spent frantically trying to piece together what had happened through chats and video calls. It's literally the same thing. I'm not talking about the usual case where a foreign language channel will translate your video and re-upload it for their audience. That is a problem, and it's why channels like Horoscope use overlays, because people will steal your video. It actually happened to me almost a year ago. This Romanian guy remade my Lazada Pelodi video in Romanian, which wasn't cool, but at least it wasn't directly competing with my English video. And at least they had the decency to do their own edit. They didn't steal my footage or anything like that. A few weeks ago, I was clicking through FNAF YouTube when I found a video called How Ultranight Ruined his career. For those of you who don't know, Ultranite is a game developer and the de facto ringleader of The Pair, a controversial FNAF fan game Discord. One of my most popular videos ever covers this very subject, so naturally I was surprised to see that months later someone else had made a video about it. The title was super dramatic, I mean, this was Ultranite's hobby, not a career. The fanverse isn't a career, but I was immediately super impressed by the video. The editing in the intro was really slick for a channel with only 315 subscribers, and while the audio was mixed much too quietly for YouTube, the quality and delivery was excellent. How did he actually ruin his career? However, my jaw dropped when the video itself began. Every line in this intro is lifted from my video and reworded, and while yes, it was all factual information, it had been plagiarized. The fact that they too started their video from Elle's perspective alone was just so obvious. Elle finding out from Kane Carter that Pop Goes had leaked was not integral to the story whatsoever. It was purely just a dramatic intro that I had come up with, and even then, the only reason the video started from Elle's point of view was because at the time, I happened to be closer to her than anyone else involved in the scandal. It was a coincidence. So what the heck was going on with this video? As it continued, I recognized more and more lines from my own video, lines that I had written. A few hours ago, an anonymous Twitter account dropped a bomb on the FNAF community. An anonymous Twitter account threw a bomb on the FNAF community a few hours ago. Wait a minute, a few hours ago? This video came out in October, six months after this happened, not a few hours. They didn't make an effort to hide the fact that this was plagiarized from my script going into details about how a group that included notable fan game developers were operating a secret chat for about a year and a half. Detailing how a group of notable fan game developers have been operating a secret chat for about a year and a half. Thoroughly convinced that this person had plagiarized my video, I went to check the channel. They had just over 300 subscribers and just four videos. The first is an Ultimate Custom Night Fastest Death video, which is where you just try to die as quickly as you can, and it didn't get much attention, but the next video did. It's just the London Bridge soundtrack from Night 6 of Juniors, yet it got 235,000 views. People do listen to songs on repeat, so whatever, but the description of the video was just the Juniors Game Jolt page with one strange line. Tags so I can eat tonight. Hmm. Oh, by the way, filling your description with keywords like this does nothing. There's a whole separate section that YouTube gives you for tags, and even then, they're worthless. I went back to the video that had plagiarized from mine and checked the description, and that's when it hit me. Note. This video is a test on how good Fiverr is. Oh, I see what happened here. This person took my video, reworded it slightly, recorded themselves narrating it, then paid someone on Fiverr to make a video. They didn't even get their own FNAF 1 footage. They took a single person's 420 mode video and sent it to the Fiverr editor alongside their voiceover and a handful of incriminating pair screenshots. And it shows. The first 30 seconds or so of the video is edited incredibly well. You have keyframed images, cool backgrounds, titles, and even an animated call to action. At first glance, this looks like a professional YouTube video. However, 45 seconds in, it just devolves into a boring PowerPoint presentation where a single image is shown for 15 seconds while random, unedited FNAF 1 footage plays in the background. This goes on until the very end, at which point it switches back to on-screen captions. The video itself was surprisingly well received. Sure, 1600 views might not seem like a lot, but it's really good for a brand new, unknown channel. 
Commenters were duped as well. Dude, this video is amazing. You deserve so much more attention. How did you get 296 subs so fast? Oh my god guys, I found Theft King's brother. It was then that I started to look into the channel's name. Stealth King. I couldn't help but wonder, was this all just a failed attempt to humiliate me? To try and show that by lazily repackaging someone else's script into your own voiceover and then paying someone on Fiverr a couple of bucks, you could achieve the same sort of success that I had? I can't say for sure that that's what this person was doing, but I wonder if this was some misguided attempt to prove that making videos like mine is easy and that anyone can do it. If it was, that's really silly because the video still couldn't exist at all without my script which it plagiarized from. Make no mistake, anyone can make a video about any subject and nothing is off limits simply because another content creator already covered it. Furthermore, you're totally entitled to make videos based on original research that I did and included in my own videos. People do that all the time. However, you can't just take entire sections of people's videos, reword a few things and then release it. That's not your own work, it's plagiarism. Furthermore, you have to cite your sources. In my video, I didn't need to cite a source for the intro about Elle learning about Evergreen's leaks because I had heard that directly from Elle herself. She was the primary source. Unless Elle also relayed that information to you, then you should probably cite my video as the source for that info because that's obviously where you got it from. Even then though, you still can't plagiarize. You still need to come up with your own angle and your own script. Videos commissioned on Fiverr can do well, and I know some commentary channels that get by with really minimal editing like this. I wish I could do that, it's just not in me. I can't leave a single image up for 15 seconds straight while I talk over it, it's just too boring. I try to release videos at the rate of a commentary channel, and I try to jump on breaking news topics as quickly as they do, but I'm still making scripted video essays. I'm not just writing a bulleted list and riffing off the cuff. Every word I'm saying right now is being read off a teleprompter. So was this video really an attempt? to discredit or humiliate me? I don't know. However, I've definitely experienced that attitude from some of my critics. There will always be people who don't respect the amount of work that goes into running a YouTube channel by yourself. People who thought that I should take down videos because they were controversial or because they made someone look bad. These people have never made a real YouTube video before. They've never sat there for 30 hours staring at the screen editing. I often have to work 15 to 20 hours straight several times a week to get all of these videos out. Maintaining this kind of output on your own, it costs you everything. Thing. It costs you your entire life. It's hard to produce videos like mine. You don't know what footage you're going to be showing when you write the script. And it's usually not until you're in premiere editing that you realize, oh, this would be a great time to show Nightmare Fredbear. When you're just starting out, that means going out and getting that shot of Nightmare Fredbear, either finding it online or ideally recording it yourself. Now repeat that for every line of every sentence of a 10 minute video. It takes hours. Sometimes I've spent 10 or 20 minutes getting a single shot that takes up only 3 seconds of my video. While I'm mentioning how difficult it is to make all of these videos, now might be a cool time to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. The only reason I'm able to produce the amount of fully scripted, edited video essays that I do is because over the past year I've amassed an enormous library of high quality FNAF footage, transcoded to ProRes and ready to go. If I need footage of FNAF security breach, I just go to my security breach folder and drag it into my timeline. Do I need the FNAF 2 trailer? I've got it, upscaled to 4K even. I don't have to spend 5 or 10 minutes going and capturing or downloading that footage just so it can show up for 3 seconds in my video. Unfortunately, when you're just starting out, you don't have that luxury and making video essays is really tedious. The first 30 seconds of my videos usually have 15 or more cuts. The Purple Guy William Afton Spring Trap Glitch Trap Burn Trap Countless innocent lives lost to this monster, the man behind the slaughter. If you don't have the footage handy, that could take you hours. So yeah, this video was bizarre. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was someone just trying to make a quick buck. Maybe it was someone earnestly trying to make a FNAF video essay, but not realizing that what they did was still plagiarism. Maybe it is someone or a group of people deliberately trying to recreate my video in some strange attempt to humiliate me. Who knows? One thing is for sure though, what this person did is none of your business. Nobody should reach out to anyone over any of my videos ever. I've been the victim of others who've weaponized their audiences against me, so I absolutely condemn that sort of behavior. If I want to deal with someone who I believe plagiarized my video, I'll deal with it. I don't need you to deal with it for me. In fact, I explicitly don't want you to. As always, thanks so much for watching. So, Theft, I read over the script for your latest theory. Oh, hey, MatPat, what'd you think? You absolutely cannot release this video. Why not? You're going to get sued. Listen, I paid you to do the intro, not for legal advice. <sighs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to the FNAF channel with the white dog thing.